there guys, this is Virginia from Swirling the Colors Paint Parties and today we are going to paint this cute little sloth and hummingbird painting. Um, I have already started the background with some light blue and I'm just going to carry on with that. Um, I have sharpied my picture which uh, if you are buying just the virtual um, lesson i highly recommend after you trace your tracer whoop there's xena our cat always making an appearance in all the tutorials go xena <laughs> anyway as i was saying um if you uh want to make your life a whole lot easier go ahead and trace your design with a sharpie um some of these flowers in this background are a little detailed as you can see with the sharpie i'm just kind of going over a little bit i'm not totally going over all of the flowers but i'm not being super tedious and careful around the um the flowers and the leaves so um i'm also using a flat brush and once I get up here I think I'm gonna trade to a round brush because it's just kind of tight up there and I'm also um, using a 8 by 10 mixed media paper so if you have a canvas um, or mixed media paper or if you have a canvas panel or if you have a wood panel um, you know you can use whatever you have available to paint on Zena, sorry, my cat wants to be involved in every way. Oh, sorry, okay. And like I said, I'm just using a light blue. Uh, this happens to be pale blue Craft Smart from Michaels. Um, it's a great sky color. Oh, we can come back in and put some clouds if you want with our fingers. I'll show you how to do that. Um, I like this uh, design because it's like <laughs> the slowest animal in the world and the fastest animal in the world, the hummingbird. I don't know about fastest animal, but hummingbirds are pretty quick. And they're just here together being friends. So, kind of makes for a cute little duo. I'm going to get what I can with this splat brush. Then I'm going to come back in with a smaller round brush. And Don't paint this. This is your branch that Mr. or Mrs. Sloth is hanging on. All right, let's grab a round brush. Uh, of course, it's on the very bottom. All righty. And I'm just kind of real quick. I'm not being super careful because I did Sharpie and it will show up through the lines and for video's sake and to do a quick tutorial um, I'm just kind of whipping through this background but please I encourage you to take your time and go at your own pace that's the great thing about a video tutorial you can stop and start whenever you want
can also go back and put multiple coats on things. For instance, if your background needs an extra coat, um, once this first coat dries, you can go back and, whoops, fingerprints, put that extra coat on there. All right. And now I'm going to use just a dark gray. This is neutral gray from Deco Art. Um, this is what Mr. Sloth is going to be. And we will come back at the end and put all the little detail marks on his fur, her fur. I keep saying his, but she's got a flower in her hair. So I'm assuming she's a girl. And just be careful right here because we got arms and hands and legs and, and then the tree, of course, which we'll get to in just a second. And this right here is a leg. This is part of the tree. I know that's a really tiny little space to paint brown, but there it is. No, I'm sorry, I did it wrong. Let me go back. Okay. Even I got confused. Isn't that sad? Disregard this right here. Any dark gray will work. It doesn't have to be deco art. You can use any kind of paint you can find at your local store. Speaking of paint, I need a little bit more. Now her face is going to be a lighter gray. We're gonna mix that with some white. So just around the face and in here is the same color as the body. And I'm going to paint right over the top of that eye because it's going to be black anyway. Aren't sloths just so cute? Did you know they move so slow? They have mold growing on their fur. Fun fact of the day. All right, this is a paw. I'll come back and correct this where I went wrong, so just stay with me. We'll get it fixed. It's the great thing about acrylic. Once it dries, paint right over the top of it with something different. And her nose is gray, the top part right here. And the bottom part's gonna be black, and we'll do that later. No, I'm turning this all upside down on y'all. Hopefully you aren't getting too dizzy. I'm using a round brush up here. If you want to use your tiny little detail brush to go in these little bitty areas, you can. Don't forget this paw over here. And we're gonna do her fingernails um, white. So if you do 
go in there a little bit, it's going to be okay because we'll paint those white after a while. Alrighty. Now I'm going to move on to the hummingbird while that dries. I'm using dark Hauser Dark Green from Deco Art. Um, it's just a real good dark forest green. Um, you can use any dark green you can find, but we're painting um, this part of the wing. Now the underneath side will be a different color. I'm going to get a little bit smaller round brush for this hummingbird. And then this wing is all the way green. Because we're looking at the back of this wing, so. And then that part of her face will be a different color. Just getting the body. And then her feathers will be different colors as well. Or her tail feathers. And if you want, while you have this green out, so you don't have to keep changing colors, um, you can go ahead and paint your um, leaves on your little flowers. There we go. All right, now we're going to tackle that tree. And for that, I'm using um, Honey Brown from Deco Art. It is just a light color brown. And. We'll start up here at the top and work our way down. We'll put some darker brown details on this um, after this dries. Right now we're just color blocking in, getting all our colors on here, and then we'll go back and add some fun details. Now on my flowers, I'm using yellow, a pale yellow a pink and a cor like a coral color not quite orange not quite pink um i think it's an apple barrel color but we'll, i'll show show you the bottle when we get to it but you can use any color you want um on your flowers doesn't have to be the ones i used unfortunately this branch has got a lot of little, little pieces that have to be gone around here, which is why it was easy for me to mess that up at the bottom. But we are going to get that covered right here.
And then in here is brown or tan. And all of this down here. So underneath the little paw, right above the flower, just hopefully you didn't paint this gray like I did. But if you did, this brown covers right over the top of it. So no worries. I got going and lost where I was. And then underneath this flower. All right, and that's your tree branch. Now I'll show you these flower colors. I've got a apple barrel flamingo coral right there. It's just a really nice coral color. I'm um, gonna use that for the flower in her hair. Not a totally orange color, but not totally pink either. So just a good mix. Like I said, you can do your flowers any and your hummingbird for that matter, any color you want. And around these circles flowers, I'm kind of just doing a little swirly circle motions with my uh, round brush. I don't know if you can see that in the video. Just kind of circling a little bit. All right, and then I'm going to paint this underneath of this um, hummingbird wing. I'm gonna paint that the same coral. I'm going to have to do this upside down, guys. Sorry. My arm won't stretch that far. Also using a carousel pink. It's just kind of a medium pink color. This is a deco art. Um, this is going to be the flowers down here. Again, I'm doing that little circular movement with my brush.
to do this flower the same color, just because this flower is kind of different. And then for the hummingbird, I'm going to paint her face this pink color as well. And then the larger feathers, the outside of the feathers, I'm going to do those pink. You can use any color you'd like, though. Of course, if you bought the paint kit, um, I supplied all of these colors that I'm using here. So you're kind of stuck with those <laughs> unless you go out and buy your own. I'm kind of being careful around these inside ones because I'm painting those the pale yellow and I'm not sure how um, how much coverage the yellow will be over the darker pink, but we shall see. I guess. Okay, and my pale yellow is, unfortunately, I've had this for a while. This is pale yellow from Ceramcoat, but I don't know where you can get this anymore. I used to get this at Hobby Lobby, but now they do not carry that anymore. So, and I know they don't carry it at Michael's or Walmart. So, any light yellow, pale yellow, light yellow, um... If you want something a little brighter, maybe like a lemon yellow. Um, I just like the way this light yellow covers. I'll be sad when that runs out because I don't know if I'll be able to find any more. But we shall see. And I'm painting these kind of tropical looking um, flowers yellow. And I'm just going from the tip of the flower in and then kind of filling in the middle. So tip of the flower, tip of the flower, and we're going to paint that uh, inside a different color. So. Almost like leaves, like if you were doing leaves. I would suggest you do the same exact thing. And then this little thing right here, her little feathers. And just touch that with some yellow.
Now for the light gray, we're just going to mix the dark gray and some white. It's super easy and we're going to paint her face that light gray. So a little bit of gray, a lot more white. Even if it's more, whoop, cat hair. Even if it's more white than gray, it's okay. Wow. There we go. If you have a cat, you know. If you don't have a cat, well, <laughs> you're, you're lucky that way. <laughs> Woo. She gets into everything down here in my paint studio. As you can see, this is just barely gray. Got a lot of white mixed in with that. And that's okay. We just don't want it to be totally white. You can paint right over the top of that nose because that's going to be painted black. And I have run out. Hopefully I have enough to finish this little section. I think so. Okay. All right, I'm gonna use that coral color for the inside of these yellow spiky flowers. And I'm going to use white for the inside of these pink ones. And you can use any color you'd like. If you have a good purple, go for it. Fingernail time. You may want to use a tiny detail brush for this since these are very small. Now, if you want to do clouds, um, just take some white paint on your finger. And give yourself some clouds here and there. I wouldn't go overboard, but... that and then maybe one up here at the top just a little fun easy way to make some clouds if you don't want to use your finger you're more than welcome to use a brush it does the same exact thing all right now we're going to take a round brush and some white paint which I need a little bit more of and we're gonna just kind of come in here and make some fur 
starts getting too white, add back in some dark gray. But just kind of go the way the hair grows and the way the sloth is hanging. And I'm just using short strokes. My brush isn't loaded down with the white paint. I'm also coming back in and just picking up some gray with the same brush without washing it off. So and I'm doing her little arm the same way, starting at her where her hand is looped and then kind of working my way down to meet this other part down here. And that's going to need a little bit of gray added in. And this one you can actually go the opposite way. So go from her fingernails out, and if you go off out of the lines and off into the blue, that's fine. This leg, we're going to come back toward the flower. And same thing here with the rest of the leg. Just be careful around those little yellow spiky flowers and we'll add in some gray and then this one I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna kind of go out from her fingernails out to the blue part and then her hair I'm gonna kind of just kind of parted in the middle, like if you were braiding your little girl's hair. And work your way out around the face. And again, I'm just picking up some gray and adding it in with the white. And I'm not doing anything around those eyes. We can just do another coat of the gray in there. There we go. Okay. And there's some detail on your sloth. These flowers probably will need a second coat of pink, as with the yellow. Hummingbird as well. All right, now for the black. The sloth's nose, the bottom part, is black. a black oval there and I'm just using a regular round brush if you want to use your detail brush you can and then his little eyes somehow mine got lost hopefully you didn't go nuts and cover yours up they're right in here somewhere. I can see that one. And then just got some little eyebrows. And then her little smile. And then the hummingbird's eye and beak. 
and I am extending that line out where I painted over it blue. There we go. And if you want, you can outline your slaw first. Let's grab some white and a little bit of that tan that we had for the tree. And do the same thing we did with the sloth, only we're using the tan and the white instead of the gray and the white. We're just making it look like a branch, giving it a little bit of bark, wood grain, whatever you want to call it. Some of these small areas in here, you can just go over them with tan. They don't need a whole lot of detail. And for the sake of time in this video, I am not going to do a second coat on my flowers, but I do recommend that you do that on yours. It will just make them look a little bit better. Like I said, some of this little tight spaces in here, you can just do a second coat of the tan. All right, and then we'll pick back up with the white. Here's your branch. Now, with that pink, I think I am going to add a little bit of white to it. That'll help with the coverage. And give it kind of a 3D look. I'm just doing little white commas. And then I'll go back in with the carousel pink. And Kind of give it a little highlight. Like so. Whoops. Picked up the pink instead of the white. As you can see on my plate, I've used this a lot. Um, I just keep going. There's a ton of layers on this thing, so. Uh, if you see colors that you're like, wow, I didn't know we used that color. That's probably been there for weeks. So don't judge. Don't judge my, my palette. Alrighty. And this one. I want this one just to be pure pink. So I'm not going to mix any white in here with this one. There we go, and do a little face, and I'll have to go back over that eyeball. And if you want, right here, on her feathers, just to give it a little bit of fun, you can add some white highlights. There we go. 
Mistakes are always fixable, usually. Okay, and the same with the yellow on the flowers. You can actually pick up a little bit of that. Um, come on, there we go. Pick up a little bit of that coral color. And do the same thing that we did with the pink and white. Just to give it some contrast. And I said I wasn't going to do my second coat on my flowers, but I changed my mind. I wanted to show you guys this. Those two got too dry. There we go. And same thing down here. Do one or two of them at a time. I think it was getting too dried out before. There we go. There's no wrong or right way to do this. You're just adding some extra color. So if you feel like it's too much coral, add back some more white, uh, not white, yellow. And if you feel like it's not contrasted enough, add some more coral. Or if you wanna do white and yellow, you can do that too. It'll just make these flowers really light. There we go. And you can pick up some more of that coral. And swirl it around in there. Might as well touch this little guy up. And I didn't put a color in there. I think I'm going to put yellow. We'll just do the opposite of the spiky flowers. There we go. All right, and leaves. You can add a little bit of white. To give those that contrasty color. And again, we're just using that dark green, and I'm just adding a little bit of white, it's a dark green, here and there. And then you can do the same thing on the hummingbird. In the green part, just adding some white in. Make that look like little feathers. All right, 
let's go back and do that again. And just do a little squiggly lines, that's all. Okay, now you're going to want to take the handle of your brush and dip it in the white paint and give your sloth some nostrils. I used the larger um, round brush. Now for the eyeballs, I'm going to use my tiny little detail brush and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to give her some eyeballs right there. And let's see, I do have a little pink pop there that I need to cover up. All right, and if you have a paint pen, you can outline your sloth and your hummingbird and your flowers with your black paint pen. Or if you don't have a paint pen, you can always just use your detail brush and black paint. Or if you don't want to outline it at all, you can leave it just as is. Don't forget to sign your artwork. And thank you for painting with me today. Have a great day.